Welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm so glad you do. Well, we have a great program planned for you. Just stay tuned in a few minutes. Uh, you're, if you haven't met him before, he, he has been on CTN programs here, a number of our shows, but on Bay Focus multiple times. Bobby Petrocelli, a motivational speaker. Um, he is an incredible man who has an incredible ministry, goes around the country uh, speaking life into teenagers, uh, young adults, uh, adults, all kinds of people. But boy, does he have a story to tell in his own life. So you want to stay tuned for that. But we're going to start today, as we often do, with Brooke Rathmel our reporter for Bay Focus, who's been out and about yes, I have. again. And you have a really, really interesting story this time. Tell this us about is, it. So this is about the Ground Zero Church in uh, New York City that we all know, or maybe you don't know that this church um, was destroyed on 9-11. And it's been years in the making, but they are rebuilding the St. Wow. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. And we actually sat down with the owner's representative and um, spoke with him, uh, so he's kind of in charge overseeing the project. Uh, and he's a, a local. It's a Tampa based, right? They're doing he's it. a local Tampa based um, architect. Yeah who's the owner's representative over this project. And so we, what they'll see today is we ended up going to a Tampa uh, church, uh, St. John's church in Tampa and did the interview there. So they'll see how beautiful a Greek Orthodox church looks and uh, kind of similarities to this ground zero church that they're in the process of building right yeah, now. Yeah, well that that church you went to, and, and I believe it's St. John's, St. John's, downtown Tampa mm -hmm. area, it's stunningly beautiful. Yeah. And that is, that it, you're absolutely right. That, that is one of the, the marks of a Greek Orthodox church is how ornate and beautiful they are. Well, you've piqued our interest, Brooke, so we are going to take a look at what's happening in New York City with this reconstruction. One local architect is assisting in the reconstruction of the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church that was destroyed on September 11th at Ground Zero. My name is Pete Karamitsanis, and I'm the owner's representative for the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church, a national shrine in Ground Zero in New York City. The church was actually existing uh, as a small little church at about 1,800 square feet in Ground Zero. And that's where all the Greek seafarers would go when they would come across, and all the immigrants would go when they first landed. And that's in the late 1800s. And it was, it was in service since then. When Tower 2 fell on it, um, it got obviously pulverized. And um, it was the only house of worship in Ground Zero. So when the reconstruction happened, it was important to rebuild it, uh, not only because it was an existing parish, but it's also a demonstration of how goodness um, triumphs over evil. And that triumph has been very evident this entire process with all the many hands involved from across the globe. I actually had to diagram where things were coming from just so that I could keep track of them. But um, the, uh, the, the basis of the design is that the church will glow from within. Uh, and also there's a connection back to Greece by the fact that the marble for the church comes from the same quarry as the Parthenon. Uh, the marble leaves Greece in big sheets at 12 millimeters, goes to Germany to get cut in half at six millimeters, then it gets honed down to three millimeters, then it goes to Austria. And in order for the marble to stand at three millimeters, it has to be put into sheet, two sheets of glass but so that the church doesn't look like a glass building during the day when the sun shines, the glass get the outside face or the outside glass gets etched in Spain. Then it goes to Minneapolis where it gets put into cassettes and then it comes into the building to be hung. Then there are 40 skylights, glass skylights on the building that are 10 feet long, bent glass, quadruple glazed, blast proof. And the only place you can make that in the world is in New Zealand. So from New Zealand, they go to Windsor, Canada to be put into frames. Then they come into New York to be put on the building. And that's just for the marble. There's a lot of iconography in church, just like you see in this church. Um, all the icons are hand painted by the monks in Mount Athos in Greece. And then they'll be brought onto the church and put up onto the walls. Um, so everything is custom made. The um, iconostasis, which is that, that part that separates the nave from behind us, separates the nave from the altar. That's all hand carved in Greece. 
in marble. Um, so we have, we have a lot of work still to do to finish it. Once finished, this church will not only be a place of worship, but a place to remember those who were lost on 9-11. There is no other place in Ground Zero to contemplate or, or um, pray or think about the loved ones and, that were perished. So the church is intended to be a, a, a cenotaph <clears throat> for those people. Um, and families are welcome regardless of uh, denomination, regardless of belief, they're welcome to come into the church. There are places in church for them to be quiet, to think. Um, and, and that's, I think that's what they, it's a living memorial in other words, <clears throat> for the people that perished. And with the significance of what this church will be to so many, the Patriarch of the Orthodox Christians recently visited to officially consecrate the church. Uh, the blessing of the cross and the raising of the cross on top of the church. And then um, a procession uh, went through to where the old church was and had a small ceremony commemorating the, the dead uh, and then proceeded on to the church and officially opened the doors. Uh, to the church. So while it's still under construction, the church was consecrated. For Pete, as a Greek Orthodox himself, this endeavor has become a true legacy project. For me, it's just, uh, of all the work that I've done and I've overseen and designed billions of dollars worth of work all over the world, uh, this to me is the pinnacle of you know, my career. The official opening will be Easter of 2022 and will open to the public the following summer. Reporting in Tampa at St. John Church, I'm Brooke Rathmel. Well, thank you, Brooke. What an interesting story on, on bringing life back into a church in New York City. I absolutely love the Tampa connection. Thank you so much, Brooke. Well, we're going to shift gears here, and our, our guest for the remainder of the show is one we love having periodically on the program because he always has so much to share, and it's Bobby Petricelli, and he is a teacher. He's been a teacher, coach, counselor. He's an associate pastor, author, motivational speaker. Whatever title you want to give him, basically, Bobby, you have. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have, have really um, been out there ministering and talking to people. And all, um, all based on <clears throat> your own story. I mean, of course, you've known the Lord and you're, you know, for many years. But you've had, I want our viewers to know what kind of just propelled you into this going around the country like you do and, and do all the different things you do. You had a life-changing moment, and he has a couple books, two we're going to show you, uh, one called 10 Seconds Can Change Your Life Forever, and that chronicles this story. Tell our viewers what I'm talking about. Well, very simply, you know, everybody goes through some form of adversity in life. Uh, for me, the tragedy that took place is when I say to people, life does not happen one day at a time, it happens one moment at a time. My life was changed in one moment. That's where the 10 seconds comes from. Yeah. The life happens in 10 seconds or less. Every decision, choice, action, reaction. My life was changed when a drunk driver crashed through my house in the middle of the night, killed my wife and seriously injured me. Went through the house. I was five feet from the wall, ran me over. Miraculously, I was flipped up on the hood of the truck is what we believe, Darlene, because it went through the next wall. I ended up in the dining room window. My wife was buried under the truck. Physically, nothing happened to her. She suffocated. Um, and literally one moment changed my life forever. And how I use this story, you don't know how many times, I've been doing this for 30 <clears> years <throat> sharing my story. You don't know how many times I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm done. How many more times am I gonna tell this yeah. story? I always share a little portion though, because people come up to me always and say, thank you. Don't ever stop sharing your story. You have no idea how that impacted and helped me in what I am going through. But the reality was my life was changed in one moment when Ava was taken from this earth. And of course, she's in glory. And I tell people, anytime there's a loss, um, we mourn with those who lost somebody. You know, there'll come a time where Joyce, yeah, I know she was in a better place, but I wasn't ready to give her up and my life to be changed forever yeah, in that moment. Yeah. But I get out more than anything else, darling, is when I speak to my audiences, I say, most of you believe drinking and driving killed Ava. No, it didn't. It had a part in her death. But tell me if I'm wrong. Before a person drives drunk, they got to be drunk in the first place. Why is he drunk in the first place? So in other words, we spend so much time, darling, going after behavior and actions 
when even Jesus said it's the sick that need a physician. It's the hurt. It's the broken. It's the rejected. The traumatized people. Something happened in their life. So for him, the alcohol abuse became a way to anesthetize the pain. Just like a girl comes up to me recently. She goes, I know when I became a drug addict. I became a drug addict when my father had an affair on my mother, divorced my mother, married this woman, and I blame myself. There must be something wrong with me. That's why dad did that. And it's amazing how I believe that's the greatest lie of the enemy. Even when this happened to me, what's wrong with me? Why did this happen to me? I was in sleep in bed with my wife. Wait a minute. The word says that God will not be mocked what you sow you're going to reap. There are decisions and choices that we don't understand everything. The word says it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. Yeah, in yeah. this world, you will have tribulation, <clears throat> but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. No, I don't send it. And no, I don't allow it. But when people make choices, the one thing I do yeah. allow is people have free will and choice that brings good and bad in this world. If God tells me, darling, to go to that door over there and I choose to go there, well, if bad comes into my life, God's like, well, what are you doing? You know how to deal with when, when after Ava was killed? Three times in the two months we lived in the house. Because there's no place hotter than Houston, Texas on this earth. Just trust me. <laughs> I've been all over this nation. I joke about that, but it's hot. Um, long story short, three times Ava came to me and asked during those two months we lived there if we could sleep on the other side of the house because our room was not cooling as the rest of the house. And I looked at her and said, Ava, we have a nice king size bed. We didn't fight. Oh, come on. Can't we stay in our own bedroom? This is our bedroom. All right, Bobby. Well, after it happened, I thought, could that have been a way that God was warning or trying to show? I don't know. Yeah. I didn't beat myself <clears throat> up tremendously because I knew, of course, my heart would never be for something like this to happen. But I'm always believing, and here's what I like to share with people. Jesus is always at the door knocking. Sometimes we pray, God, can yeah. you come to the door? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm already at the door. The reality that I pray for people all the time, starting with myself as Lord, you're always knocking at the door of every area of my life. May my may my spirit be in tune with you. Yeah, I, I have to I have to comment there because that's I, I have what you just said um, is so true. I, I do believe God gives you at times, tries to speak to you with warning signs, little little things he puts puts in your path and sometimes we're open to hearing, sometimes we're not. And and you know, we miss it at times and other times, you know, you you, You're dead you, on. you couldn't right. have put the pieces together. Absolutely. In the end, you, you, God foresaw and knew where, which direction would go and uses things for his glory. But we're in an imperfect world. We're going to, as Christians, going to be, I mean, that guy drove through. He made that choice. You didn't. We're, we're subject to some things around us. It, it doesn't always mean we're, we're preserved from it. But what this did is it launched you. And, and, I, and I believe you were married, correct? Later, yes. And, and you, you know, you launched you into ministry and, and, um, took you into places and opened doors of ministry, which I want to say, it's been wonderful to see those doors opening again with pandem the pandemic situation. Now you're out ministering and you did some things virtually. and um, But you've seen some things along the way. We want to get into talking about our, our subject today. Uh, along the way, you're, you're ministering to the body of Christ and there are areas that you feel passionate about. And one of it is, and you're kind of touching on it a little bit with the decisions people make in their life, is um, Jesus can, comes to heal the brokenhearted. Well, that's the reality. So here's a simple analogy that I want to show you with this bag. This bag represents our hurt, our pain, our brokenness, our trauma, yeah, our yeah. rejection, isolation, everything. The cell phone, which is a smartphone, I don't know why I have it, because I'm not very smart in handling it. <laughs> it represents us. Now watch this, darling, <clears throat> simply. If I put the phone in the bag, is it still a cell phone in the bag? Yes. But here's the kicker. While it's in the bag, is it being utilized for the purpose it was created and manufactured to be utilized while it's in the bag? No. Well, the enemy's greatest goal is to keep us locked in those things yeah. that hurt us, broke us, wounded us. Jesus' desire is to pull us out of that bag and to restore us and resurrect us back to who we were created to be in the first place. That's what the whole purpose of being born again is, to being restored to who he created us and wanted us to be in the first place. But the reality is this. You know, I share this so much, and I ask people all the time, Darlene, even in the church world, I said, so what's the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
99% of the people say, well, Jesus came to die for my sins. Is that the whole gospel? Yeah. No, it's not the whole gospel. A sacrificial lamb was dying for my sins. You think God's going to send his son when a sacrificial lamb was supposedly already accomplishing that? No. But guess what? A sacrificial lamb didn't go through the garden of Gethsemane, didn't wear a crown of thorns, didn't get beaten and scourged, didn't get nailed to a cross, didn't carry a cross. Okay? Why? Because everything that you and I would ever battle in life, okay? One word describes Jesus, and the word is healing, mm -hmm. healer. He brings healing yeah. to the spirit to restore us to who we were created to be. <clears throat> he brings healing to the soul, which is the mind, the will, and the emotions. He brings healing to our physical body, to every circumstance. Well, that's the full gospel. That's the good news that, guess what? No matter what you've experienced, no matter what you've felt, no matter what you've gone through, Jesus understands that. That's why the Pharisees and Sadducees were fighting with Jesus because he was taking all the downtrodden, the outcasts, the throwaways. And they were like, wait a minute, what are you doing? These people are sinners. They're evil. They're bad. And what did Jesus say? It's the sick that need a physician. I'm going after the root issue. No, I'm not condoning the wrong they did. But to get to the root, behavior doesn't change if a heart condition does not change yeah. it's heart modification not behavior modification that's what jesus knew yeah. behavior would not change unless the heart is changed that's why the simplicity was this with mary magdalene with mary magdalene when he said go and sin no more what he was really saying to mary i love you you're my daughter i created you you need to know one thing mary if you go back to that lifestyle i will still love you but I won't be here to protect you. And if you get stoned, I'm not here to protect you from getting stoned because you went back to what brought you to this position in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was a choice that she's had to make. Absolutely. You and know, and, that, and that again, day, that, that's a theme of the choices. Um, but, you know, one of the other things you talk about, um, too, along with that, Jesus is the healer and the brokenhearted. But to make these changes in life and, and to be really operate in the fullness of where God wants us to go, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Talk Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. Well, here's the reality. Jesus, imagine he's crucified. He raises again. The disciples have him. And all of a sudden he goes, see you guys. Got to get out of here. Wait a minute. You're not going anywhere. We just lost you already. What are you talking about? We got you back. I got to go. Because if I don't go, you cannot yeah. be empowered to live the life you are called to live and what I have taught you for three and a half years. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can do that. I need to send that. See, we have it different than anybody in the Old Testament did. Why? Because they didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. That's why David said, take not thy holy presence for me. We got him in us. The greatest power in the universe that raised Christ from the dead is living inside yeah, of us. Yeah. Here's the kicker. How do we access, manifest, and and Con not conjure is not the right word. How do we bring out what's already in us? I always say this to people. You don't go to the gym to find a muscle. You go to the gym to develop the muscle you already have. Yeah. I just make this real clear. You follow football at all, Darlene? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Does your husband uh, like oh, football? Oh, yeah, he does. So yeah. watch this. I tell people <clears throat> a particular quarterback drops back to pass. He gets hit. Yeah. He gets tackled. He gets carried off the field because he's injured and wounded. They blitzed him on the very first play. I said he did everything to prepare for that game. His lineman did everything to prepare for that game, but he forgot the most important thing. He didn't put on his football equipment. Mm -hmm. Everybody else had football equipment on except for him. So when he got hit, he had nothing to help protect the hit. He gets carried off the field. That's literally the armor and the protection that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. And all I can say to people is when I pray for them, if I pray for you, darling, my simple prayer is this. Father, this is your daughter. Mm -hmm. You are living in her. I pray that she would be tuned into your voice because you will always lead, guide, and yes. direct her into the best you have for her. Apart from me, apart from my spirit, you can do nothing. But with me, you can all do all things. And that's why I say to people, when we talk about joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength, okay? But watch this. In his presence is the fullness, fullness of joy. joy. The more I allow his presence mm -hmm. to overtake me, I'll have the joy to face everything I'm going to face on this earth. Yeah, and, and let me say that, that um, again, with what we've even talked prior to this, um, the Holy Spirit um, will guide you. I mean, that, that guidance is so important. There's a, a little term, my mother, who was just a godly prayer warrior, I mean, just an intercessor, um, uh, but she used to tell me, and boy, have I messed up when I haven't done this? She says something, mind the checks. 
Mm. When the Holy Great Spirit word. checks you, when you get a check, that the Holy Spirit is, is putting, maybe halting you, trying to stop you from doing something, or you don't have a peace about something. Absolutely. That's the other, I have this written in my Bible, just these three words, just etched in there, go with peace. If you have peace, you don't make a move without that. But the Holy Spirit gives us that guidance. And if there's a check in your spirit, and you know when it is, you know when you have a hesitation sure, or you have a, absolutely. you know, that when the Holy Spirit's residing in us, you need to listen to those those voices. The Holy Spirit will guide you with that. And he will be, the, you know, the comforter. And He'll so, always so guide levels. us into righteousness, <clears throat> yeah. peace, and joy. Yes. That's what the yeah. Word tells us. He yeah. will guide us. So it's real simple. Let me say this, Darlene. I believe, and I don't say this in any arrogant way, I promise mm -hmm. you, but in the church world where we have complicated is this. You know how simple it really is? Everything you do, you say, you feel, you act, you react, you respond to is one of two things. You're either of the spirit or you're of the yeah. flesh. Yeah. And it's yeah. real simple. The simplicity of everything we teach and preach is this. The more Darlene and Bobby are led by the spirit, and the Spirit has dominion over these situations, the better we're going to be. Yeah. That's why the Word says, take up the cross daily and follow me. Crucify the flesh daily because the flesh wants to go here. The Spirit yeah. wants to go yeah. where the Spirit wants us to go because yeah. it has the best for us. It's really that simple. It is, and it will be, it will be the two will be at war with, with, with each other for, you know, and, and we're all, you know, until we get to heaven, we're working out our salvation. So you, you get used to that battle and get used to be able to stand yes. on the Word and, and overcome it. All right, one more area you'd like to talk about and that is unity what do you what do you feel why is that so important in the body of Christ today so watch this okay let's talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers we'll bring your husband in for a moment <laughs> but I'm gonna ask you a question because you're wise enough on this. <clears throat> you've watched enough football to know yeah. I watch more with Tom Brady there now so okay, okay just like no that. problem so watch this does everybody on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play the same position yeah no. is everybody on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the same height and the same weight is everybody on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from the same part of the country or have the same parents? Are they married? Well, we hope they're not married to the same person. Yeah. Do they have the same children? Do they wear the same clothes? No, 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 no. But they're all on the same team. Yeah. For yeah. one common goal. Yeah. For one common desire. Well, guess what? The Word of God says this. It's real simple. Either you're part of the kingdom, you're part of the body, or you're not. We don't have to agree on everything. I'm called, and I tell people all the time, I am called to accept and love all people no matter what. I'm not called to approve of everything they do, say, or how they that's, live that's around. That's a really good way to put it. But the reality comes down. We're all yeah. on the same team. Well, here's what God showed me, real simple. That's why I love talking about this. We're going to see revival in this nation when we go to heal brokenness, all forms of brokenness. Number two, we allow the Holy Spirit to have his dominion in yeah. his way. And number three, we come together as a body. When so much of the church at times will say, oh, wait a minute, you believe in raising your hands? I don't. Okay, we can't be, what? Oh, you believe in the gifts of the Spirit in this way and I don't? We can't, wait a minute. We're on the same team. We have a common goal to serve God, yeah. to allow Jesus to be Lord of our life yeah. and allow the Holy Spirit to work. We may have differences. I'm not put on the earth to be you, yeah. you're not me. That's why the nose doesn't speak in the morning and say, Bobby, I want to be the eye, the ear, the mouth. Every body part yeah. has its role. Okay, all right, those three areas, where that, that is, you just put it, all into perspective. I love that about the healing the broken heart. It takes the Holy Spirit and unity. All right, the last just we have just a couple minutes. Um, tell our viewers how they could best connect with you and, and where you go to speak and minister and how they can reach you. And, and because you go, you've been going to schools, everything. Just give us a little bit of that. Well, of that. I've been speaking for 30 years. I've spoken 6,500 times in 30 years to wow. 5,000 high schools in America. Wow. 500 middle schools, 500 colleges, the rest are churches, Make-A-Wish Foundation, social yeah. groups, everything else. Yeah. The reality is this. I want people to know who they are, that yeah. they matter, because when I went <clears> through <throat> the tragedy, those kids showed me how much I mattered. I want people to know before I go after anything else that they have great value, that they're not defined by what has happened to them or even the wrong they have done. Mm -hmm. They're defined by their uniqueness, their pricelessness, their one-of-a-kindness. And I tell people, no matter what group I speak to, will you be you? Because everybody else is already taken. Why do we want to live a life <laughs> of comparison? That. I I'm not that. here to be Darlene. Darlene's not here to be Bobby. I'm not here to yeah. be Brooke. Brooke's not here to be me. Every one of us brings something special. Just like you and I are doing this interview, all the people who are running the sound and the cameras and everything yeah. else, without them, we can't yeah. do this. That's, That's right. why when I speak, I always say to people, when I speak, 
I said, don't thank me. Thank the people who brought me in. Thank the technicians who made this happen. Thank even State Farm Insurance has sponsored me some. Thank everybody who made this happen, because without them, I yeah. can't be here. You don't hear the message. Okay, I think probably, um, th this is great. I think you, that message right there would hit so many different groups. Best way, I think, is through your website, correct? They can contact you. BobbyPetroselli.com, yeah. 10seconds.org. I'm all over social media. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do Wait. I know what I'm doing most of the time? Probably not, but they can still contact me that way. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully get a hopefully get a response back from one of those. Uh, yeah, one of those. absolutely. And I respond. I do. It sometimes yeah. it takes a while, yeah. but I feel personal to yeah. let people know I'm. Okay, and that, uh, Bobby, thank you so much for coming on the show today. You're always su such an encourager uh, for the body of Christ. And stay tuned on the screen. You're going to see uh, some uh, pictures of his books. You want to get, he's got a couple of books on his website, how you can reach him. Um, you, they're so inspirational, including reading the books. And I know you'll want to have Bobby come and speak to your event, uh, your church. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Darlene Greenlee, and I want to invite you to join us each week on Bay Focus. We are going to highlight local ministries, community organizations, events, concerts. Reporter Brooke Rathmel goes behind the scenes to get the interviews you want to see. I hope you will join me each week on Bay Focus. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's program um, earlier in the show, talking about this reconstruction of this Greek Orthodox Church in New York City. Boy, that's so incredible what they're doing. And then always, always honored to have Bobby Petricelli with us, sharing with him some, sharing with us some of his motivational uh, thoughts that are God-given, no doubt. I'm so appreciative that you tune in each week. I hope you will also connect with us on social media. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube. You can catch the shows, watch them again, send them to your friends. And I hope you will have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. And we will see you next week on Bay Focus. May God richly bless you.